Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream. I've got my co-host here, Rob Rowe. Hi. And I've got an amazing guest for us today. And today we're going to be talking about if you've ever thought about how much your personal quest for self-empowerment can create the life you've longed for and bring about your intuitive abilities. And our guest today is going to be talking about that. I just want to say thank you so much to Dr. Dane here and to Access Consciousness for supporting the show, for sponsoring the show. I love you and I think the work you do is just magnificent. So if you're looking for energy healing, any place from learning how to be an actual facilitator to just receiving to going to workshops, body work, all of it. They're all over the world. Go to drdanehere.com. It's H-E-E-R.com or accessconsciousness.com. You'll be glad you did. So our guest today and Rob and I are going to be volleying back and forth and enjoying this amazing man is Dr. Michael Gross. I think sometimes you meet somebody and it's really meant to be. He and I met at a workshop sitting next to each other, learning tech that was going 90 miles an hour and quickly became friends. So I'm thrilled to introduce you to him because his work is magnificent. He's an author, he's a professional speaker, he's a transformational coach, and he's the published author of The Spiritual Primer, Applying God's 12 Transformational Laws to Reawaken Your Soul, Reconnecting to God to Experience Your True Sources, Love, Joy, and Happiness. And this is his latest book that's out, The Spiritual Primer. Just got through reading it and Rob read it. And for more than three decades, Michael has worked and taught classes on spirituality, self-empowerment, Reiki, and other modalities. In concert with God, the true source, he has achieved great success in this endeavor, as well as miraculous healings, including fragmented soul retrieval. You can learn more at drmichaelgross.com and Dr. Michael Gross, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's a joy. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're thrilled to have you. And I, I guess I want to start here. In your new book, Spiritual Primer, you talk about the right rule of action and correct exchange. Will you walk us through that concept? I would love to. You know, my spiritual journey started working with guides, master guides, guardian angels and the archangels, and then working with the Elohim, different order of angels. And finally, uh, in my meditation, I ran across a very highly evolved spiritual being. And I said, who are you? And he said, I'm the true source. And I go, are you God? And true source said, well, I really don't like the word God because the word God has been misused by Eli Amin, Hitler, uh, Mussolini and all kinds of despots. So I really like the word true source. Mm -hmm. And of course, my next question is, what are the rules? <laughs> right action and correct exchange. The right action means you must always ask for something that's right. You don't ask for someone to break a leg, lose a job, get sick. And correct exchange is like paying it forward. And in those rules, the true source said, if you want something, you have to ask me for it. And I said, why? He said, because I work in harmony with you. And the rule is, if you want something, it's right action. However, it's going to be my time, which is going to be the perfect time for you. And I will tell you, after, over the last 15 years of working with the true source, and I've taught many people, it's proven to be 100% correct. That's where we get to right action and correct exchange. When you say that we have to ask, so it just makes me wonder, like, if it's God, if it's true source, doesn't true source know everything? I mean, does it really have to be something said out loud? That's a great question. You know, most people think, or some of the Judeo religion, Judeo-Christian religion, they teach God knows everything we're doing. And the truth is, we're given free will and free choice. So... How could God know everything we're doing? I don't know whether I'm going to chew gum, have a hamburger, or go to sleep. <laughs> so if we bother to think about that, we have to understand that we're given free choice to do everything we so desire. And I asked about that. And, you know, God the true source said you can do anything you so desire as long as right action. 
But I said, what about if we mess up? Well, it has nothing to do with me. I'm unconditionally loving, allowing, and non-judgmental. But I'm going to tell you what you did. All of you, when you left my bosom, said, we want to be held accountable. And holding accountable, we call the law of karma. So as they say, what comes around goes around. So it makes us responsible for everything we do. And being responsible, that's part of right action. Because we have to think twice about what we're doing and if it's the right thing to do. And I look around and we all have karma. And you know, karma is a bad rap because they say it's negative, but karma is positive. If I gave away $10 million in a past life, somebody's got to give me $10 million. I'm ready. I'm ready to receive it. <laughs> On the other hand, if I was a Scrooge and took advantage of people, I'm going to experience it. But the truth is, once you experience it, it's over and done with. Then you can move forward. That explains why God, the true source, is unconditionally loving, allowing, and non judgmental. And do you actually channel God? I've channeled his, well, indirectly. Um, it's not like somebody's talking to you, like, hey, Michael, go down the street and take a left hand turn. But it's like the thoughts and the energy, the love, the joy. And when we talk about channeling, I think we need to understand a little bit about my history of channeling and we'll have fun about this. Okay. And I wanted to really channel. And I asked a friend, how do I channel? So, well, put on your tape recorder, because you know we're going back a number of years, and go into a deep meditation, and you're going to get a great message. And I got excited, and I did it. And I turned on the tape recorder. And 20 minutes later, I came out of my meditation, turned on the tape recorder. And this is the wonderful message I got. <laughs> <laughs> my message. I go, that doesn't really work. I got to try something else. <laughs> I became a conscious channeler, and now it just flows. I'm always in, carrying on a conversation 24-7 with the true source. But there's another part of us called the oversoul, and there's a soul. So the oversoul is an extension of the true source that lives in the bosom of the true source. The part of that leaves the true source, comes into this embodiment known as Michael Gross or whatever. And... My soul in my body is always communicating with the oversoul, who is then communicating with the true source. So it's like a three-way conversation. So vicariously, the true source is living through our experiences. And this is what I was taught. Well, let's say you mess up and true source goes, I'm unconditionally loving, allowing non-judgmental. Michael screwed up. Isn't that great? He learned a new lesson. Boy, is that empowering. And that's really the way it works. We are our own worst enemy, our own best friend. And I wanted everybody to understand that. It's all about our experiences in life. And everyone has a mission and goal. Everybody's mission and goal. Maybe it's to um, bring forth for the family. Uh, it could be your career. And then there's called a spiritual mission and goal. And kind of selfishly, I kind of concentrate on the spiritual mission and goal. My mission and goal, which became very evident after looking at Kashik records, was to be a message of change, help every, everyone reconnect with the true source, but also to change the mass consciousness. Because on the planet, we can't exist this way. There's too much hate and anger. But I don't want to go too deeply into that. But that just gives you an overview. You know, there is something that you could add there that's in your book, which is, I think is very relevant to what you just said. And that's the concept of 100 monkeys. You want to walk <laughs> through that just for a moment? Yes, thank you for reminding me. You know the story of the 100 monkeys? <clears throat> the uh, scientists went to a South Pacific island and they were bringing some bananas and some of it by mistake fell in the water and got muddy. And one of the monkeys picked it up and washed it off, opened up the peel and ate it. And pretty soon all the other monkeys were doing that. And then he went to another island, which was let's say for the sake of argument, 100 miles away. And the same thing occurred and the monkeys automatically did it which says when we are in contact with each other telepathically, that everything goes on in the life we are aware of. We just have to learn to listen. So if we look at like America, it was a group of people that said, we want to get out of the yoke of England. So you had the Patriots, and then you have those who were pro-England. And what happened is that small group of people is spread like wildfire. Fire. And my, my opinion is, my thoughts are, and my dream is, and my mission and goal is to spread this information that you are unlimited, that you can connect with anything you so desire. 
that you are the solution and that we need to change the mass consciousness to bring about love and joy and happiness. Because that's what we're supposed to be about, love and joy and happiness. Not all the stuff we're going on right now. I'm sorry, and get a little animated about it. But, well, but when you say that, I mean, I love that. I love the concept. I love the idea. But I feel like it, it can be a difficult thing to achieve today. We're in a world where we're overstimulated. We're going 90 miles an hour. You know, you always, I don't know. I think it can be very difficult to stay in that space. Although I have to say, having experienced you, I feel like you do stay in that space. So how do you do that? How do you clear out all that negativity and stay in joy and happiness and love? Well, there are two ways. At night, a lot of brie and wine. That helps a great deal. <laughs> the other way is just to really meditate. And, you know, just be. Because our life is pre-programmed to some extent. And I want to explain that. Whatever your Kashuk records are, whatever you're supposed to accomplish, it's there. And there's an old axiom, and that is, as you do the work of the true source, everything will be supplied to you. Now, everybody has a mission and goal. And if we're doing the work of the true source, you don't have to worry where the next dollar is coming from. When you, you say work of the true source, you mean your soul's mission in this life? Yes. Okay. Yes. And what I do is, thank you for bringing that up. So what's important is my mission and goal, let's say, for example, is to change the mass consciousness and bring about reconnection to the true source. So if that's my mission and goal, which it is, everything that I need, the right people to meet, like you two beautiful people that are so gracious to have me on your show. Uh, if I need a 747 or a 777, it'll be supplied to me. Everything will magically come because that's what you're supposed to accomplish. The problem is we're trying to control and manipulate our life. We're not in the flow of life. So we worry about having the right relationships. We have worry about having enough money. Are we healthy enough? And I want to talk about a little bit about how we create things. Yeah. And I sat there one day and thinking about why is a salamander can grow a new tail, new legs, and we can't. And you know why? Because it knows it can. Yeah. It knows it can do that. It's in their DNA. Now, we're supposed to be more intelligent. So if we're more intelligent, it's in our DNA that we can create anything we so desire. I remember I was performing a wedding one day. And I was talking to the wedding coordinator, and she told me she had cancer six years ago. I said, wow. She said, they gave me six months to live. I said, what'd you do? She said, I ran through the fields barefooted in my mind. And she said, six months later, I was still here. Six years later, they can't find a drop of cancer. So it shows you how powerful our mind is. So if you think of love, prosperity, abundance, perfect health, you are going to achieve it. Because what the mind can conceive, the body will believe. And that's what it's all about. And you know my mantra, you are unlimited. So, and thank you for wearing the wristband, the Michael, Dr. Michael Gross wristband to prove it. He gives these out to remind you in case you forget you are unlimited. Thank you. <laughs> that's beautiful. I love the fact, because that's, that's pretty big. I love dreaming big. So the fact that you can say, if I need a 747, it's going to come in That's God's right. time, right? Right. And I truly, truly believe that. I've had so many miracles in my life occur. You know, every day is a miracle in life just to wake up in the morning and, you know, see the sun and have the fresh air. And we just don't show appreciation. And there's another law. And the law says, whatever you give thanks for, the true source says, well, you must like it. We'll give you more of that. So... If a person says something negative, I'm going to be a failure, I can't afford this, that's what you're going to get because you're manifesting it. Thoughts are things. We're great at manifesting our life. And that's something I wanted to approach because every thought is a manifestation, every single thought. And if we bother to look at that, it's like, wow, what are we creating? We're angry, we're upset. That's what we're going to draw into our life. If we believe we're successful and prosperous, that's what you're going to draw into your life. And I look at a lot of millionaires, and a lot of them have gone bankrupt, and they come back bigger than ever. This is, and I looked at it over the last 50, 60 years, and went, wow. So in their mind, they're going, I can be a millionaire again. And that's really interesting, but here's something really basic. And years ago, I, was, uh, I had a business, and I was short of some supplies. It was a holiday weekend. 
and I read in the book where the chairman of the boards of the big corporations would put out this thought before they went to sleep, I need an answer, engineering answer, whatever. And so I put out the thought, where am I going to get the goods that I need for this weekend? It's a holiday weekend. I woke up in the morning. I had the answer. I called some friends. They had extra supplies and it was taken care of. So it shows you that you put out the thought, you'll always get an answer. But what we want is an answer is like, Michael, take a left-hand turn here and a right-hand turn, and there it is. Instead of trying to control it, just be open to it, and it'll flow. So, you know, life stands for let inner true source guidance flow freely and endlessly. L-I-F-E, let inner source guidance flow freely and end endlessly. And that's what it is for. You know, we have uh, a trip coming up to Costa Rica, yeah. and, and it's really clear we're meant to be there. Even again today, I've had successive things come up without any attempt. People we know who are connected with this place, coming upon, you know, things that shouldn't have been where I was, that were what we're going to do. I don't want to talk much about it because the point is we have this trip coming up and um, ostensibly it could be extremely expensive or not. And my thought about it is let's just book the damn trip. You know, like I just feel like if everything's pointing me, us to get there, we're meant to go there. And we just have to not worry about the minutia because it's all going to work out. I really feel this so strongly, like got the passport, book the tickets, let's just be in a thousand percent and know the rest of the universe is gonna accommodate us to get there. You're a hundred percent correct. You're right in the flow, that's perfect. You're a fine example of it. That's great that you pointed that out. You know, whatever you think you create and whatever you create your experience, so you're thinking about going to Costa Rica, you're gonna have a great time, the universe is giving you a gift, Guess what? You're going to have a ball. You're going to enjoy yourself. And that's a great country because, you know, they've never had a war. No. They're the most they're literate military. country, too. They don't have a military, you know that. They just have some police, and that's it. And they have eco-terrorism. Not terrorism, tourism. Party and slip. Hello. Anyway, you're going to have a good time. And you're going to have to tell me what a great time you had. Send me wonderful pictures. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Not to mention the mangoes and the, the giant avocados and papayas and all of that and plantain. So I'm, I'm down. I'm in. All right. And <clears throat> did you have anything to ask before we go to break? Um, well, why don't we go ahead and go for the break and then uh, we'll take up after that. Okay, then we shall. And you are listening, and you're also watching Dare to Dream radio and podcast. You can become part. This is such a tongue twister, but it is an invitation to you to become part of the Dare to Dream team. Because running this show and putting it on and getting the most amazing guests who are here, plus all the background and admin, et cetera, et cetera, and editing, all the fun stuff you don't get to see, but you do get to see the finished product. It does take money. So if you are enjoying this show and the many shows in the archives, donate to the show. You can go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. You have a big purpose to fulfill. So I ask, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? And what would it take for you to feel completely free and bold? This show is the number one transformation conversation, and we're literally here, all of us, to support you to be that and do that. Michael's talking about your soul's mission, dare to dream. Dare to do that in a big, loud way out into the world, because it is why you're here, and you are the missing piece of the puzzle of heaven here on earth. I couldn't be more passionate about that. So if you'd like to help us take care of the very many business pieces that it takes to do this, go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. And if you're tuning in after we've started, I'm Debbie Dashinger. Rob Rowe. So that's R2D2. <laughs> All right.
<laughs> and this is Dare to Dream. I'm interviewing Dr. Michael Gross. And by the way, he is offering the Dare to Dream audience a complimentary 15-minute consultation. You can go to drmichaelgross.com and fill out the contact form and let him know you heard it here and you would like to connect with him for that consultation. So, so Michael, let's talk for a minute about motivations. Why should someone even care about this kind of thing? There's a couple reasons that I can see, but I'd really like to get your thoughts. One, of course, is it's a worthwhile goal in itself to improve ourselves spiritually, to get more in tune with the true source. That's, that doesn't really require any other motivation. It's a worthwhile goal in and of itself. But also, you, you've talked in your book, and you've talked with, with me a fair bit about you know, the bigger picture of raising the consciousness of the earth and some threats that are in the works, both on the earth, there's, there's motivations of some people, some entities that are moving us in a direction that we don't want to go. And there's, there's bigger reasons that we want to achieve this 100 monkey syndrome of a critical mass of people that are are really working for the benefit of the entire human race and could you tell us a, a little bit about some of those kind of things some of those bigger reasons that we would care about maybe countering some of the things that might be you know working counter to our interest and working as sort of a unified consciousness of the entire human species that's a great question thank you for asking it you know, it's really important for us to understand there's been other root races on this planet. And some of them have evolved to a higher dimension, or I call them planes, or, but higher dimension. Then there are others who have wiped themselves out. Now, there's something in this corner of the universe called the Galactic Federation. And the Galactic Federation is with Jesus Christ, the Archangel Michael, Buddha, and there's a lot of other ascended masters there. And a few people on this planet that are in human form are also members of it. And if we understand that everything is in a delicate balance in the universe, all the planets are in delicate balance. And if a planet were to destroy itself for one reason or another, it would throw all the planets off their orbit. So this galactic federation is to keep peace to stop us from trying to destroy ourselves. But we are expendable. And if we're going to do is destroy the planet, we won't be here anymore. You know, one of my... <laughs> One of my uh, students used to say, you know, their body is affordable housing. And I got a kick out of it. But our bodies are so we can experience life, air, dreams, you know, cold weathers, whatever going on. But the Galactic Federation said, we're trying to keep peace. You're not going to destroy each other. But if it comes down to that, you're off this planet. How that will be achieved, I really don't know. But I will tell you that there are forces that are looking after us. One of the things we need to understand is we are the royalty of the universe. And most people go, what do you mean we're the royalty? And the answer is our DNA consists of so many extraterrestrials that we have lots of different DNA within us. You know, they're just discovering new DNA in our bodies and some of it they call junk DNA because they don't know what it is. Absolutely. But we have that as a conglomeration from so many extraterrestrials. And what we have, a lot of them don't have is emotion. So those who are Star Trek fans, you know, Dr. Spock, he was plain, you know, analytical and logical. But with the emotions, we can create things quickly, like this program, Dare to Dream, which is so beautiful in what you're doing. You're waking up people. But when you can dream something and you feel something, then you're going to create in your life almost instantaneously. And that's what we're here for, to realize we are the soul, S-O-L-E and S-O-U-L, creator of our lives, and we're responsible for this planet. Now, I call them the nature spirits, and I remember one time I was teaching a class about it, and some call them constants and divas and elementals, whatever you want to call it, they're all synonymous. And the elemental said, you know, the earth has really got a lot of problems, and we're polluting it. We need to respect it. And so my group, we were asked to send healing to Mother Earth, to the elementals. And everyone who did that a week later, their backyards were blooming mm -hmm. with flowers and trees like overnight. Uh, one of them uh, was telling me that when she did that, 
she had a plant. She will tell you that in two days grow six feet. It blew her away. So, you know, it just shows you that humankind, when we're in harmony and balance with everything, we can achieve unbelievable things. And that's what we need to realize. We've got to change the consciousness to love. I don't care what your political leanings are, whatever it is, has nothing to do with that. It's how we respect each other, how we treat each other, and how we regard each other. That's what it's really about. You know, sometimes you get cut off in traffic and, you know, you want to give them the bird. And sometimes you feel like that. And I just go, send you love, poor soul. You're just in a hurry. I'm not going to buy into my anger. And just let them move on. And that's what we need to do. Just, just think if everybody was loving. You know, it's the old cliche, do unto others as you would have them do, do unto you. What would happen to this planet if we practice that? Just think what it would be like. We'd be helping one another. And we used to do that eons ago, back in the 30s and 40s for the most part. And somehow it got lost. So I want to thank you for bringing that up. Do you have any more questions along that thought? Well, well there was a question there that I, I'm kind of a science nerd, as you know. So um, just to uh, follow up on, on one comment you made about the DNA, uh, you and I know from uh, one of our joint favorite authors that that 97% of the DNA that you talked about actually follows a structured language. We had talked about this the other night. So Who's that author? That's uh, Graham Hancock. Okay. And... Um, that 97% that follows the exact uh, form of a human language that is common to all human languages on the planet. It's called uh, Zipf's Law. I think it's uh, Z-I-P-F. And I think that's important because it, it, if we can start to decode that DNA, we can reach back into the distant past and, and learn what we've been all about from the, uh, the, the source since the beginning of of time and evolution. And uh, that, I think, ties in with the whole idea of us being connected to the true source potentially all along. And it seems to me that some people are able to maybe decode some of those messages in that DNA more than other people. So it, it seems to me kind of an important point to, to be aware of kind of merging the scientific angle with the spiritual angle mm -hmm. a little bit. Well, you know, I talk about this a good point. I talk about the true source being inner intelligence, all right? And in, in my book, I talk about, and this is just a loose explanation, there's all this atoms and nuclei, positrons, electrons, particles, neutrinos, all that stuff floating around and finally coagulated, so to speak. This is an oversimplification. And began to think, what if? And that's how creation started. Just thinking, what if? So when we left the bosom of the true source and we created a planet, or we created a house or whatever we're doing or our affordable bodies to house our, our souls. Everything is just a grand experience for us to enjoy. But when we, I call it birth out of your body because you're birth in, when we depart and we go back to our original form, which is pure unadulterated energy. But one of the things we need to understand is, I'd like to share this. So one of my clients wanted a healing and she was having a problem with gluten. And I said, okay, and I, the way I work is I leave my body. I said, true source, I need true source and the guidance. All of a sudden, I'm looking at her DNA, like, like I'm looking at you. It was so clear and concise and saw what was in her DNA that was causing her gluten intolerance. Oh. And we began to work on it. And it's, she's beginning to change. I'm not going to tell you it's 100%, but she is beginning to change. And part of it is because her belief system, her belief system so what the mind can conceive, the body will believe, so she's doubting this is going to work, and I know it's not intentional. It's going to slow down the process, but eventually will work. But everything is encoded, as you say, in our DNA, and the secrets of the universe and the universe is within our DNA. And I believe someday we'll get the full explanation of it. But whatever you are today, you know, you're Rob and you're Debbie. You're a conglomeration of all your past lives, all the energies of the God, the true source. And you're only limited by your thoughts. Well, if, if you just look at the ratio of it, if, if 3% of that DNA carries all of the uh, chromosomal messages that makes us human with all of our complexities, blue eyes, brown hair, tall, short, and all that, if that's in 
makes you wonder what could be in that other language of the 97%, which is incredible. But I, I wanted to get into a little bit of some of the work that we've done together, because there might be people listening that might find it very interesting to maybe get with you and do some sessions. So I want to speak from personal experience here, because you and I have had, I think, four formal sessions of the actual work that you do. And then we've also had just a number of conversations that were more friendly. But in, in the work that, uh, that happened, I, I'd like you to maybe talk a little bit about some of the actual technologies you use. You use something called uh, the timeline process or timeline therapy or something like that. And I really had some amazing breakthroughs with that. And it, it pre created profound and lasting change in my emotional structure and the way I relate to certain people that have been in my life and certain events in my life. So maybe could you give us like a, just a quick synopsis? I know it's a big topic. Sure, thank you so much. You know, when I work with someone, it's really intuitive. So I ask the true source, what should I use? And I can't remember the gentleman who created timeline therapy, but essentially what you do is you go back to when the original problem occurred. And there's a process you say certain things, and then I work with your body, and I don't know if he did that, but I work with your body to pull out these motions. I think Carolyn Mays wrote the molecules of emotions years ago. And when I looked at everybody's body, every experience we have is stored in our body. And you know, years ago, a number of years ago, I did a workshop and it was from Friday to Sunday. It was really intense. And all these emotions were pulled out of their bodies. And they said, well, I'm free, Michael, and I feel renewed, rejuvenated. I said, yes, but now you gotta watch your thoughts because you can put new emotions in your body you weren't planning on. So one of the things we need to understand is you know, timeline therapy goes into your body, and I changed it because the true source said, go in there and pull out their emotions for them. And then I combine it with soul retrieval, because when we're under stress, part of our soul says, see ya, I'm out of here, we don't want to be here. And I'll relate that story. So in, when I was in 10th grade, we had geometry. We had a teacher that looked like 140 years old. She was probably 65, but she looked old, and I screwed up and didn't do my homework. She embarrassed me. She was great. She taught by intimidation. Mm. Needless to say, I flunked geometry. So I had to go to summer school. Teacher was phenomenal. I got a 98. What a difference. But then I discovered in my 30s, oh my gosh, a part of my soul had escaped. So I had to release those emotions. Part of my soul said, Michael, I don't want to be here. I'm too embarrassed and reclaim it back. And if I got enough time to expand a little bit more on it, Debbie? Yeah. Please. Thank you. And you know, I just kind of let it go. And then I read a book how the Native Americans do it, and they smoke pe peyote. They call upon, you know, their guides and you know their totems and so on and so forth. And I had a dream one night, and in my dream, True Source said, "You're going to do soul retrieval." I said, no, I'm not. You're going to do soul retrieval. No, I'm not. It's too difficult. And they said, "You've done it in past lives. You know all the shortcuts." No, I'm not. And I'm arguing. And <laughs> I wake up in the morning. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Two weeks later, a friend of mine, Sui Pua'a, who's from Hawaii, goes to see an intuitive in Seattle, which was 40 miles away from my office, said, you're supposed to see a man named Dr. Michael Gross, and he's going to put you back together again. And she didn't even know me. So he comes down to my office, midnight. This is really great. We worked till 3 o'clock in the morning. Make a long story short, he was only 5'4", but gung-ho Marine, and a captain in the Marine Corps, and he was Vietnam. He remembered as a baby that the Japanese had strafed, strafed, or strafed, yeah, strafed the island in Hawaii, and he had survived. And there were so many parts of him to put him back together. Mm -hmm. So the true source said, well, you got to incorporate it with everybody now. And that's one of the therapies in which I use is bringing back the soul retrieval. And you know it makes a big difference in your life. You feel really whole and complete. Well, one of the amazing things about that, uh, that technology and the visualizations were that we can choose a point on the timeline and forward of that timeline is our present life and beyond that timeline is our past lives or pre-birth so that point can represent our birth so you and i did both one time we did one from the birth point forward so certain points in today's life and another time we went back into the uh, the distant past and, and we had uh, times in ancient greece uh, times in a battlefield with the persian army and uh, there were some very interesting things that happened uh, there. And 
uh, you know, I found those to be extremely valuable. And I don't want to, you know, I don't know if we're going to bore the listeners with my personal story here, but I just want to let people know that these are tools that you are in command of at, at a very proficient level. So I, I just uh, want to, you know, throw it out there to our listeners that if these things are interesting to you, people can get with you for these kind of sessions. And I will just, uh, you know, say from personal experience that the results are profound. And uh, you know, one thing we worked on with me is uh, my kind of obsession with being a little ana analytical and scientific. So we, <laughs> we, we, found parts, we found parts of my past lives where being analytical and scientific was a matter of not only my survival, but the survival of people around me in some of these various circumstances. So uh, there, there are techniques you had to go in there and work on those to you know, sort of, you know, bring everything back into balance. So um, you just just want to let our listeners know that. You, so what's different? I would like to know what's different. I, well, I think um, I think I'm a lot more prone to be intuitive and prone to be uh, accepting of indications without having to analyze them as much. It's a work in progress, of course. Well, what is the thing you say? Oh, trust the source. If it's right to be, say it again. If you trust the source, then trust the content. And that came from one of the guides, Evelyn, mm -hmm. as you might recall. Yes. And that, was, that was another thing that you helped me do. Uh, you asked me how many guides do I have, and I had a visualization that uh, indicated the answer was eight. And you had already seen that, but you didn't want to you know, feed my preconceptions by telling me that. So. That's yeah, I, so sort of as, as my teacher and mentor, I'm sure there are things that you're holding back a little bit for my own good, knowing that there's a time for me to learn those things. And that was one of them. That was fascinating. So since then, we've worked on talking to several of the guides. I now know some of their other names and some of their individual functions. And uh, whenever I do these meditations that you've taught me, that's part of what I do is connect with these eight guides and maybe ask them if there's uh, anything in particular I should be working on or if they've got anything they want to tell me. So uh, it, it's, it's been a fascinating uh, journey, only, even though this has only been going on a couple months. Thank you. You honor me for letting me work with you. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I'm humbled and, and truly I am. I want to tell you one quick little story about a past life. And I, I was leaving my office and years ago, we, I had a little shop called Michael's Angels. My deceased wife named it. And um, in the back was my office, and she wanted to sell angels. And I walked into my office, and a woman said, you're Michael of Michael's Angels. I've been looking for you. And I go, uh-oh, what did I do wrong? She said, I prayed. I was told to get, a, get in contact with you. I said, okay. And she said, I have a grandson. The heart rate and blood pressure is out of sight. He's three days old. And I was told you're going to be able to heal him. I said, really? Okay. So Mary Bridge Hospital, which is in Tacoma, I was told to go in. And I went there at midnight because that's the only free time. And of course, you know, I'm a non-denominational minister. So I got in there to say a prayer or whatever. So they put on all the gowns and everything. And I'm talking to a soul. And I said to him, what, what's going on with you? And he said, I don't know if I want to be here. And I said, well, why? He said, well, I was in World War I. I was in France flying an airplane. I was shot down and died. I don't want that to happen again. And I said to him, first of all, that was World War I. We're much more modern now. We don't have the draft. You don't have to be in the military. And we talked back and forth. No more biplanes. I, pardon me? No more of the biplanes with the machine. You got it. No more of the biplanes. And so, you, and they didn't have parachutes, as you know then. And as I'm talking to him, you know, I can hear them saying, oh, the minister's sleeping. Well, of course I wasn't, but I'm out of my body because I'm talking to him, but I'm able to hear things going on. Anyway, after about half an hour, he said he'd reconsider it. And I asked him if he please would reconsider it because he's got a lot of work to do and just gave him a little bit of a hint what he had to do. And I left. And then about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock the next morning, she stopped by my office and said, the blood pressure is normal. Heart's normal. It's going to live. Thank you. She gave me a hug and walked away, and I said, wow, thank you, True Source. That's amazing. Wonderful. So those are some of the things. 
And just quickly with an animal, my best friend, her daughter had an animal, who was a border collie, and went, couldn't have a collar on. And the dog would just lay down. So she says, can you help me? And so I talked to the dog. Dog said, past life, it had a collar on it and had a, a leash tied up to a wagon. The horses bolted, the dog was dragged and died. So I talked to the dog and said, look, the reason I want a collar and a dog tag in case you get lost, they love you very much, et cetera, et cetera. 10 minutes later, they put on the collar, the dog just walked off. Wow. So it shows you that everything has a soul and we could talk to anybody. Of course, they may not agree with you, but nevertheless, you gotta be careful what you say. And I wanna finish that little story. In high school, I didn't know what being psychic. Yes, please, I was wondering. <laughs> So they got the hot cheerleader. Hey, I want to go ahead and ask her for a date. So I get up there and I said, hi, I'm Michael. You're pregnant. And it's like, slaps me. It's like, I wanted to ask her for a date. Where did that come from? So, you know, be careful what you say. Be careful what you think. And I didn't know what being psychic or intuitive meant. But I told you that story when I met you. And it's really quite humorous. After that, I learned to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I'm wondering, uh, you know, when you told that story about the teacher that you had who taught by intimidation, it makes me reflect on third grade. I had a teacher by the name of Mrs. Forget, right? It's spelled forget, but I've never been able to forget her. She was so mean. Everything about her was so mean, like this tall, uh, slender woman with like curly mop top hair. And so I, I, I don't know that I do this anymore, but I've always had this way of soothing myself. I realize now it's soothing myself by doing this, right? Curling my hair. And she would scream at me in the middle of the class. <laughs> and I, I didn't realize I was doing it, you know? And I remember <laughs> one time, Mrs. Forget, it was so unlike her. It was Halloween, my favorite holiday. And we didn't know where Mrs. Forget was. And all of a sudden, the closet where we kept the clothes opened up and she had gotten dressed with these big galoppy feet and this whole outfit. And it was the most incongruous thing, you know, this really nasty, mean woman who was trying to get us to laugh, like was, she was actually being fun. I don't know if any of us knew how to respond when she walked out of the closet. We were so stunned. And I keep thinking when you shared that story about your soul fragmented. I wonder where my soul went that year with Mrs. Forget, because I really was peeing in my pants every time. <laughs> I was in that class, like, well, I see you on the other side changing your underwear, but other than that, you're doing well. <laughs> no major soul pieces. And you know, I also have experienced your healing. I feel as well. I didn't know what to expect, but that was really profound and. And I will answer the same question I asked Rob. And, and I actually don't know how to articulate it. I can tell you without a doubt, and I'm not sure I'm fully reintegrated. I can tell you that I'm different with people. Great. I am really different. I feel different. My ability to speak up, my ability to be calm with people and present it's just really different. I'm still me, but it's yeah, like you know. better me, right? <laughs> yeah, but you know, when I look at both of you, well, I, I had seen, you know, Rob just recently on Zoom last week. But when I look at you, I see you changed. You have a glow, you're clear, your energy is clear, your skin is clearer. And now that I look at you again after we talked last week, you know, there, you have changed quite a great deal. You seem more composed. You seem to have more energy around you. You seem to be more aware of things around you in a positive way, both of you. And, you know, I, I would like to say this forum that you're doing is so important because you're exposing people to so many different points of views and you're helping them to really grow. And whoever they resonate with, that's who they're going to be with to, to grow. And that's what we're here for, all about growing and changing. Yeah. So I want to thank both of you so much for this forum. I don't know if we got much time left, but I don't know. True Source said, hey, tell them they're really doing their missions and goals. No, tell them that they're doing something very, very important. So all your listeners, they're doing incredible work. I got to tell you that. That's awesome. Thank you.
Uh, let me ask you just a, a little kind of a nuts and bolts here question because you've got some very clear and specific techniques in your book. It's not just conceptual ideas, which is great. So you've got some great big ideas to think about, but you've also got some very solid tools that, that people can use on a daily basis. So what, one of them is this uh, 108 pennies and the dream heaven meditation. Can, can you can you walk us through that a little bit and, and why that's Thank a, you. a good meditation? And can I, can I put a, an addendum on his question? Because Please. one of my fascinations with the dream heaven and pennies well i'm looking at the book but I, i've re i've read it and at the end of all your chapters you give these exercises and what i you'll see mine is my book is really <laughs> highlighted <Very marked up. laughs> that you, you sort of build architecturally right so i feel like you yes. give out this meditation but then with the ending of every chapter you give very specific suggestions to incorporate right now add this now add those questions now take a look at this or open up to that. So I'd love you to incorporate all of that and explain it. Well, thank you. You know, when I, um, I told you that <laughs> I didn't want, I don't like to write because I don't type. And uh, so I didn't really, you know, I fought writing a book and my Akashic Records said I'm supposed to write a book. Everybody said, write a book. They said, everybody knows what I know. Well, I learned that they didn't. But I want to talk about the dream heaven and a little bit more, but can I make a little commercial? And that the commercial is my book, The Spiritual Primer, is available at all booksellers and on Amazon. But also, if you go to my website and I'm offering everybody a special price, which would be $25 instead of the $29.95 plus shipping and tax, it'll be $25 if you wish. And I will personally uh, sign it for each one of you. Now the commercial's over, let's talk about the other part. So the two most powerful words in the universe is I am. So where does that come from? I am comes when Moses at the burning bush. Who am I talking to? I am that I am. Well, I says you exist. Am is another one of the 360 names for, for God, the true source. When you say I am, you say... It's Yahweh, yes. Yeah. Pardon me? Yahweh is I am. Yahweh, am, just am. Am is another word for the name of God. So Adonai, Yahweh, Jehovah, there's 360 names for God. So whatever name you wish to use. And you're right. So I am says you're one with God, the true source. God, the true source is one with you. Well, you know, in the book, it says we're made in the image of God, the Old Testament, which people have to understand we're an aspect or part of God, the true source. Everything is. But let me go about a little more about dream heaven. So let's say on a scale of energy, on a scale of one to 10, I am is number 10, the highest vibration that could exist. Dream heaven is about a 9.8, more or less. It accomplishes two different things. I am says you're one with God, the true source, and it helps you to raise your vibrations, feeling love, joy, and helps you with your mission and goal. Dream heaven is another vibration, helps you manifest, but it works with your soul. And whatever needs to be healed, your soul determines it. And you begin this healing process. And it brings it up for you to release it, little by little or as fast as possible. And there may be people in your life that will help you do it, or you can do it on your own. And then as you're doing the dream heaven, and there's an exercise where you inhale dream and exhale heaven. All right. What not only does it do that, but it helps you manifest greatly. Your intuitive, your psychic ability is incredible after a period of time. And, you know, my book coach, which is Patrick Snow, and I've been coaching him for three years. And he goes, my God, I just know things are going to happen. I mean, he'll, he'll tell me I'm going to meet this woman because he's a single guy. And, oh, she's got about three kids and she's this and that. And it turns out to be true. He has no idea. Now he's a Capricorn. So he's analytical and logical but yet all these things are starting to come forth. So it raises your vibrations, it helps you heal, and helps increase your ability to manifest your life. Oh, that's the and for the, well, this is interesting, I don't know what quite happened there, but um, <clears throat> we're winding down here, but will you just add the piece about, so this meditation includes the I am, the connection with true source. It includes dream heaven, which, increases the intuition and the manifestation and healing and healing right and and so what what about the pieces in each chapter 
that add the different questions. Thank you. I lost track of it. I appreciate it. One of the, in the book, it's a how-to book, so to speak, and it's how to develop your intuition, how to raise your vibrations, and how to heal. And it's taking you step by step. So you go from kindergarten all the way up to being a senior in high school, using that as a metaphor. And each, each chapter involves about healing, raising your vibrations, and achieving a joyous life. As you notice, I have a lot of quotes in there. And one of the great quotes I love is from Gandhi, God has no religion, which is true. But I get arguments on that, by the way, and it's okay. But I want to talk about a little bit of my book. My book is not about to change your religious beliefs. It has anything to do with that. It's about empowering yourself to achieve the life you so desire. Each chapter gives you an instruction how to heal and release things so you can grow spiritually, so that you can bring about love and joy. I call it your made in heaven, miracle made your perfect job, prosperity, joyous relationships with people, and having fun. You know, religion is about somebody else's rules, regulations, and laws. Spirituality is about your own experience. That's what's really important, because someone else's rules, regulations, and laws, it's powerful. I'm not going to knock it. It's very good. But what you experience stays with you. I once asked the true source, what good is religion? And I heard this, this answer, Michael, religion is great. It teaches rules and regulations. It keeps people honest. But the true, soul, true souls who want to search beyond that, it begins to open up the door. That was me. I was religious. I learned the rules and regulations. I thought it was great. And then all of a sudden, I began to question, like you, Rob, and like you, Debbie. You begin to question and look at things. And you realize there's much more than anybody else's rules and regulations. Because, you know, my mantra, you are unlimited. And if you will look in the mirror before you go to sleep each night and say, I'll do it, Michael or Debbie, your name, I am unlimited. Watch what happens in 90 days or less. Your whole life will change. That's what it's about. It's all about you having the life that you deserve. Not what you think you should have, but the life you deserve and what you plan to have. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for all of that. I am unlimited. It's yes. Only for Dare to Dream listeners only, I have made a unique deal with Thinkific. And you can create, you can market, you can sell your own online courses. Thinkific's powerful all-in-one platform makes it easy to share your knowledge, grow your audience, and scale your business. And whether you're educating 10 students or 10 million, Thinkific offers the easiest technology and best support. All of my products are up there, I can promise you. It is beautiful and so easy, even if you're not tech savvy. It works. So as a Dare to Dream listener, you get three months of the business plan for free. You must use this link. It's thnk.cc slash dev. So go to thnk.cc slash dev and get your free deal and get your products up there. Start making money. You know what? Intuitively, I heard people need to pay attention to it. I'm going to take the course because you've got a lot to offer and it's going to change my life and help me reach whom I so desire. So thank you. Thank you so much. And excuse me, Michael is referring to the ultimate visibility formula, which is awesome. And of course, when we roll this back out, you all are invited and, and the course is also up on Thinkific. It's just, it really is amazing. I'm not kidding. For somebody who doesn't love tech, although I have some capability there, uh, it's been lovely. And how it turns out, it looks like landing pages and web pages, and it's such a creation. So definitely check it out. We're with Dr. Michael Gross. We're coming down to the end. He is available for intuitive readings, spiritual seminars, healings, cellular release, past life regression, and soul retrieval. You can go to drmichaelgross.com. This is his new book, The Spiritual Primer. <clears throat> And he's asked you every night for 90 days to say, I am unlimited to yourself in the mirror and change your life. And um, Michael, I just want to ask you here at the end, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Well, thank you for asking. You know, I am driven, and I've told you this, to change the mass consciousness with everyone, to help them reconnect to God, the true source. That's what I'm all about. I am so driven, you have no idea. I concentrate on 24-7.
And that's what's so important for us because each one of us are the solution. And may I just add, if you want to go to my website, as you said, drmichaelgross.com, or you can, my email is drmichaelgross, the number one, at gmail.com, drmichaelgross1 at gmail.com. So thank you, everyone. And you know, you all have a special place on this planet. You all have a mission and goal. And again, thank you, Rob and Debbie, for opening the door. Don't forget about the Tuesday call. We've got to talk yeah. about that. I've listened thank to you. that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Oh, thank you very much. If you yes, every to Tuesday you night, know. Rob, you're beautiful. I appreciate it. Every Tuesday night, I have a call from 6.30 to 7.30. And you can ask any question you so desire. And then there's a 10-minute message. And I'm looking for the telephone number. Uh, do you have it handy? And it's on your website, too. And, you know, I'm curious, when, when you do that, I guess I was on the phone, so when I did it, where yeah. do you write the questions? <clears throat> you, where do you write the questions? Yeah, I was on the phone. For no, you don't, you don't write, you just ask them, and I write them down, ah. and then I answer them, and then afterwards I give you a 10-minute message. And the telephone number has changed because conference call was so sweet. They decided to change the telephone number without telling me. No, here's my recommendation, if you don't mind, because you people will be listening to this ad infinitum in the future. And in case your number changes again, it is right there in your website, drmichaelgross.com. That's yeah? correct. Yes. That's why I would recommend people go there because get the most uh, up to date phone number, the conference lines you can get in. It's free, man. If you want to connect with this genius, it's free. It's such a lovely gift. You know, you can go every Tuesday uh, and enjoy yourself. Bring your dogs. Bring, bring your mamas. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Everyone's invited. And uh, thank you so much, Michael, for coming on the show today. Thanks for your brilliance. Thank you for honoring me. And thank you for the wonderful job you're doing. I appreciate it. We love yeah, you. We, we love you, both of you. Have a great day. Great to see you, Michael. And I end today's show with this quote from Dr. Michael Gross. At any given time, we are either on the road to destruction or greatness. This depends upon how you view what is going on in your life. It's like the proverbial concept that your gas tank is either half full or half empty. What you think, you create. And what you create, you experience. What are you creating? Where do you stand on these thoughts? You are unlimited. Next up on Dare to Dream, I'm featuring the hilarious psychotherapist, Rachel Kaplan, who runs the Healing Feeling Shit Show. True. It's emotional potty training for grown-ups. You're going to love this conversation. This woman is outrageous and brilliant. Subscribe to Dare to Dream. You can get it in your inbox and notifications. Give us a five-star review so other people can find the show. And you can subscribe to these YouTube videos at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And remember, the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. Absolutely. R2D2, Michael, signing out. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye, everyone.